This next example over here, we are given angle A is 40 degrees. And so this 16 here is side A. I'm going to label that. We do not know angle B, but across from him, this 13 would be side B. And then we do not know angle C, but down here, we, this would be side C, if I knew that. So the only ones that I really know the angle and the side that is opposite of him is my A, angle A and side A. So I'm going to say sine of angle A, which is 40, over his corresponding side, which is 16. And I say to myself, what's the only other value that I currently know? The only other thing I know is side B. So sides go in the denominator. So that's going to go down there. I don't know angle B. That's going to be my unknown. That's going to be my variable for this first uh, thing here. So when I cross multiply, that has a variable in it. So I can't put it in the calculator. 16 times sine of B. This is all numbers. I can put that in the calculator. 13 times sine of 40 is 8.36. Trying to solve for B, B is my variable. So we have a, a couple of things happening over here. The first thing I notice is the 16 that's multiplying to him. So I want to divide both sides by 16. Leaves me with sine of B. When I put in the calculator 8.36 divided by 16, I get 0.52. B is not by itself yet, though. We have sine of B. And so to get rid of that, I'm going to do the sine inverse to both sides. Okay, that's going to cancel and leave me with just B. Again, just because I'm writing it like this, you know you have to put sine inverse in the calculator first and then put the 0.52 in the parentheses. And that's going to tell you that angle B is 31.33 degrees. The only time we do the sine inverse or the tan inverse or the cosine inverse is when we are solving for an angle. Alright, so we just found that angle B is 31.33 degrees. <clears throat> Now, we know two of our angles. It's very easy to find the third angle because the angles in a triangle have to add up to equal 180 degrees. So 180, subtract out the 40 that I knew to begin with, and the 31.33 degrees that I just found for angle B will tell me that angle C, capital letter for an angle, is 108.67 degrees for angle C. We have to set up one more proportion because I still do not know, I do know angle C, but I still do not know side C, okay? So again, since angle C and angle B are decimals, I'm going to stick with angle A for my proportion. So sine of angle A, which was 40, and his corresponding side was 16. And I'm trying to find side C, so that's going to go down here. <clears throat> I do have to use though that angle C, because I got to be C here, is 108.67. So I have to kind of use that decimal anyways, but at least only one of them is a decimal. So when I solve for C, I'm going to cross multiply. All of this is number values. Put all that in the calculator. 16 times sine of 108.67. And the calculator should tell you that that's 15.16. Cross multiplying this way, though, I have a variable. So that's little c multiplying times sine of 40. I'm trying to solve for c, and so you have to think about this as like a combo thing here, okay? That's multiplying times c. So I'm going to divide both sides by that sine of 40, opposite of multiplying. Cancels. So... Side C, little c, put this in the calculator, 15.16 divided by sine of 40. And the calculator should tell you that side C is 23.58. That is not degrees because that is not an angle. That is the side C here would be 23.58. Okay. I think. 
think you pretty much got the hang of it. Let's skip this one and let's look over here. Pause the video here and you guys try and see if you can do number eight right here, uh, right now. I'll post the answers up before we move on to problem nine. Pause the video and try this problem here. You should have gotten little side A to be 4.38. You should have gotten angle C to be 66 degrees. And you should have gotten side C, so little c, to be 8.25. All right, I wanted to save example nine for the very end because he works slightly different. When you look at this, we know two angles but 10 is the only side I know, and I don't know the angle that's across from him. Remember, I started this off saying you have to know an angle, and you have to know the side that's across from him, right? Well, I don't know any of the sides that are across from the angles that I'm given. So think about it. How in the world can I figure out an angle and a side that's across from him? Well, if you know two angles in any triangle, I can find angle A because the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So 180, subtract out the 70, subtract out the 81, will tell me that angle A is 29 degrees. Now I know the angle and a side that's across from him. So sine of 29 over his corresponding side, which was the 10, and then I can use whichever other one I want to do. Let's just go in order. I'll do sine of angle B to help me find side B. Cross multiply here. It's all numbers. 10 times sine of 70 is 9.4. Cross multiply here. That's a variable. So I'm just going to write B times sine of 29. To solve for B, I'm going to divide by sine of 29 to both sides. And 9.4 divided by sine of 29 is 19.39. That's for side B. So the only thing that I do not know still is side C. And so I can use sine of 29 over the 10. I'm trying to find side C, so I'm going to use angle C, which is 81, and side C. I'm going to multiply there, it's all numbers, 10 times sine of 81 is 9.88. Cross multiply here, C times sine of 29. Trying to solve for C, I'm going to divide by sine of 29 degrees to both sides. And when you put 9.88 divided by sine of 29 in the calculator, it should tell you that side C is 20.37. That's a side, so it does not get degrees. All right, you have a, a practice worksheet to practice some of this and check your answers.